Hello and welcome to Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. My name is Julie and I'm here to impart some knowledge to you today via a two minute art tip. And today's tip, probably not gonna be two minutes, not gonna lie. But I wanted to introduce you to a new product. Some of you may be familiar with Hanamule watercolor papers that we've had available for a while now in like the sheet form. Really beautiful, professional, artist watercolor paper, just glorious. But now we have them available in blocks. As we said, a professional watercolor paper, 100% cotton rag, mold made, acid free. It's a light, fast, natural white. So not like a super, super white, but it's it's very clean. It is surface sized um, and it has a vegan sizing, which means it doesn't have any kind of animal derived sizing uh, in the paper. And surface sized means that um, that sizing is just sprayed on to the top which means that it's not permeated throughout the whole entire sheet, which means that it's an exceptionally tough paper, but the sizing is really only applied to the surface. So if you're really, really into scrubbing and stuff like that, um, you know, maybe not. However, this paper is really unusual. It's got a crazy soft feel. Um, I really kind of like it. It's categorized as a cold press, um, but it doesn't feel like a cold press that I'm used to. So we've got some here and I already have a sketch established um, going on. So I wanted to show you a little bit about how this behaves so they can get a feel for what we're talking about. I have my golden fleece size six here and I'm going to primarily use wet paint onto the dry paper. I'm probably not going to do a whole lot of wet and wet unless we get into doing some amorphous shapes in the background. Um, so let's just play and I'll show you a little bit about what we have going on here. Let's see, I'm gonna start with some American Journey Green Gold because this is a very, very um, yellow base green. So we're gonna keep everything lively and fresh springy looking. We're actually rendering a um, rhododendron leaf here. So we want um, some nice bold color in there, but we don't want to muddy everything by getting too much going on. Um, so this is a color that I really like, especially with like vegetation and stuff. Um, that keeps every all the other layers fresh. It doesn't muddy um, easily. Um, and everything stays light and bright and warm and pretty. And so this is a really, really nice color. And sorry for saying really, really. I've noticed that I say that a lot. But when something's really, really good, you have to tell people. Um, so we're just going to lay this down and you can see that it has kind of, um, it, I would almost say like a velvety texture to it. It's very unusual for a cold press, not typical. So if you're looking for something new um, to kind of play with and see if this maybe is a little bit more your direction and your liking, check this out because, um, as you can see, it's not like um, smushy and um, woody, like a paper towel. Um, this holds a very tight, crisp line. It's gorgeous. It just um, doesn't have a, a pronounced kind of cold pressed tooth like you might be used to. Um, it behaves a little bit differently than that. So we're going to um, just continue to drop some color in there quickly. One of the mistakes that I see people make with, um, especially like vegetation and botanicals is that they, they will use the same color combinations throughout and they'll treat every leaf the same. And even though it's the same leaf on the same plant, that doesn't mean that all of them look alike. And then this, you know, this leaf, it isn't even there. I just put it in there because I, I wanted it there. 
because there's just too much of a weird space there. Um, so the key is to kind of keep it light, keep it interesting, keep the viewer's eye moving around. And one of the best ways to do that is to change up the color, the way it plays throughout the whole piece and how it lays um, within each of the, the leaves, the sections of the plant, um, because you can use it as a visual tool to move the viewer's eye around the piece. We're going to pull, pull the viewer out with a little bit of um, repetition of this color, like way out here and stuff. So again, this is American Journey uh, Green Gold. You can see it's <laughs> sort of green, but it's 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 a very very yellow based green and gorgeous in my opinion because it just it like we say it plays well with others, uh, and I like it. So, and then we need to make a couple of these things happen higher up. We're going to drop some of that in here and up in here. And you can see green gold is fascinating because you can, you can make it this green like that or we can dilute it with a little bit of water and it can be this kind of green, this just magic, warm, golden happiness that we're going to let happen right here. And we're not worried about if we splash it into one of the other areas. It's warm enough and forgiving enough to wear that won't matter. So don't get all hung up. It's fine. Um, so, and we are going to just show you basically how this paper works here. We will take this piece um, to the next level um, on the next round. We're going to play around and let the colors kind of do their thing. This is um, a new color that we have coming out, uh, named after Ward Stroud. Ward's uh, Ward Jeans Dusty Green, um, and it is a lot of fun. It's um, it has its own particular behavior and attitude. Um, and um, it, it just looks so rich and luscious next to so many uh, things. So when you see that out there, don't be afraid. Pick up a tube. It's going to be great and you're going to love it. Um, but it's um, very uh, highly pigmented. And so <laughs> just a little bit um, is going to do just fine. And um, it's just warm and luscious and pretty. And, and you can see even in the palette, it, it's got warm tones and cool tones all in one. And so you get this uh, amazing dynamic um, range of color within this one thing. Um, and it's, that's nice. I mean, that's nice to have. And so we got some good stuff happening right here. We're gonna keep playing that up, keep playing it up and letting some good stuff happen. And we're going to, we've got some wet and wet passages where we've got um, existing color already down. We're not gonna try and, you know, like steer it in too hard. We're gonna, um, let some fun things happen. Now we're going to switch up. Um, so we got all this like 
yellow green, yellow green, you know, cool stuff happening. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna er, steer it in another direction. And I'm gonna grab some Quinn Violet, which is, as you know, one of my favorites. Um, and we're going to um, drop in some cool stuff. This is a little intense. <laughs> color is um, it's super super highly pigmented it doesn't play around lots of gusto for your money so we're going to basically just put in color here and those two things mixed together I don't care it's fine it's gonna create something warm and yummy we all want that with this color dynamic you're going to have this like warm richness um, the Quinn is gonna the quinacridone violet's gonna provide that like just super sharp visual contrast. Um, it's so, ugh, I, ugh, I just love this color. It's so pretty. And so we're gonna let these things mix and mingle. And yeah, you're going, oh, it's running all over the place. Yeah, it is. It's fine. Um, so. We're going to um, stop here <laughs> um, with a little bit of tempting you. Uh, now that we've kind of shown you a little bit about what Hana Mule is about, we'll take this on home. We'll finish it up and uh, show you exactly how all of this happiness happens. Definitely take a look at the Hana Mule watercolor blocks. They are so yummy and so different and well worth a try. We love them and we sure you will too. Make sure to enjoy. Oh.